Approximately one week away from the announcement of the new FPV drone from TGI, I've been doing some thinking. Welcome to another video, I'm Henrik Olsen, and if you want to learn how to make better videos with your camera and drone in general, then consider subscribing to my weekly tips, tests and tutorials. DJI has announced an event on March 2nd, where they're going to officially reveal the DJI FPV combo. Not that there's much left to reveal, because the net is as usual floating with a lot of information, including unboxing videos, uh, first flight and uh, all sorts of stuff about the specs for this drone. So there's no, not really many surprises left for them to reveal. So I was just testing out a new setup here for my studio as I had some uh, technical problems with my Sony a7 III and my trusted 24mm G Master lens. This kit suddenly decided to sort of not being able to be compatible, which is not something that you want to see on a $4,000 camera setup. So I had to take that down and send uh, all the parts in for repair. In the meantime, I've decided to substitute my main camera with the Sony ZV-1, which is the one that I'm shooting on right now. And the audio is being generated with the, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that is just sitting on a boom arm here next to the camera. So let me know what you think about the quality produced with this camera compared to the previous one. Okay. We more or less have all the information right now and seen all the pictures of the drone and that DJI is going to announce. And uh, one of the key highlights of that one is that it will be able to shoot 4K 60 FPS and it will be able to do 120 FPS in 1080p. And they are introducing their Rocksteady image stabilization technology that we know from the Osmo Action Camera, which pretty much aligns very well with my expectation about introducing digital stabilization. It would offer three flight modes, a normal GPS assisted mode that will allow you to fly the FPV drone like any other GPS assisted drone that we know from DJI. There's also as expected a sport mode that will allow you to fly it a lot faster, but still within the same sort of flight characteristics that you know from your normal GPS drones. Then it has a manual mode where you sort of uh, stepwise can release the full potential in this drone and fly it like a real FPV racer. It's probably not going to sit well with the hardcore FPV guys, but you will be able to tweak and uh, change settings on the drone that will allow you to do more or less the same things that you can do on a real FPV drone. It will further include lighting as some sort of a return to home feature, also a return on low battery level, as well as forward and downward facing obstacle avoidance sensors. And finally, the most important feature if you're going to experiment flying crazy with this drone is some sort of an emergency brake. If you activate that, the drone will snap into stabilization mode and stop instantly. And that will be super interesting to see how well that works in their real life. Further, they seem to introduce a new type of remote, which is a one hand grip that will allow you to fly the drone differently than what we're used to with the two hand controllers. As far as I can see, this is optional. So now to the point of uh, this video, you will be flying an 800 gram pigeon around 60 miles per hour with any obstacle avoidance uh, enabled. So this is going to cause uh, a lot of challenges, especially with the rules of uh, VLOS that you need to have that you need to have the drone within visual line of sight. At least from what I know here in Denmark, it's not allowed to fly these kind of drones unless you have somebody uh, standing next to you, keeping an eye on the drone, being able to take over if something is going wrong. I could fear that uh, even though this type of drone is going to re revolutionize the way that we are filming and the way that we are handling drones in the field, this is not a sub 250 gram drone where the impact is small when it hits. This one can really do some serious damage if it's hitting something with that kind of speed, 60 miles per hour. And I fear many could be tempted after spending something like twelve to fifteen hundred dollars on their new toy that they would just go out and fly it and not bring an additional person that can act as a spotter. The consequence of this is that this could lead to accidents, especially because many of you guys don't know anything about flying FPV, me included. I'm messing around a little bit with this kit. And just to learn the FPV skills, but there's a long way to go and you crash very, very often. And this is only a lightweight drone that doesn't do much damage. Do you think this will change the regulations around drones after this has been out for a while? Let me know in the comment below and let's have a serious discussion. And keep the tone clean down there.
So I don't know what my feeling is about this. I'm probably going to get this drone because I'm also very excited about new technology. But it's kind of like a dual uh, edged sword that uh, I think it can cause uh, problems in the long run that DJI is introducing a drone like that. I know the responsibility is on your shoulders to obey the laws out there, but um, let's see how that goes. At least voice your opinion below. By the way, did you see the video with one of my unicycle friends that lost connection to his uh, mini over open water and it started to descend? You can't believe how that panned out if you don't already have seen it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.